Hi, everyone, and welcome to Pal to Tech Live. This is a live workshop that I'm not going to be on too long, maybe 20, 30 minutes tops. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about AFC settings for shooting video. And I'm going to show you some demos and explain those concepts to any of you who might be confused by that. I know I was when I first got my Fuji camera. Um, I don't know if anybody's joining us. Let me take a look. We are live. <laughs> hey, Andrew, how you doing? Oh, cool, cool. And the other thing, I wanted to jump on now because a lot of people told me that they couldn't attend my other live stream because it was on a weekend. It was during a weekend. So I'm trying to mix it up a bit and sort of drop in at random times, you know, like a slot machine. Maybe you'll, you'll catch me. So anyway, Great to see all of you. Please let me know in the comments if there's any problems with audio. I've had issues with audio. Um, and let me know if there's like serious lag. Right now I'm showing in the um, stream, it looks perfect. So let's just keep our fingers crossed that we can uh, get this done. I've got some camera demos to show you. Uh, quite a bunch of technical stuff today. So I hope on the technical end, it works out well. Uh, anyhow, let me make one more check before I get started. Sounds like the audio is a bit low. Let me just turn it up a bit. Test, 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 testing, one, two, three, four. Okay, good, awesome. Um, I have really been trying to up my game and get these live streams better because I think that they're really a great way to educate because you can have real-time feedback and I absolutely love that. So anyhow, let's get right into the topic for today. I'm going to do about a 10 minute overview of it. And then when I'm done, we'll open the floor to some questions and answers. And then I got to run because my kids are getting home and I got to greet them. So, okay. AFC custom settings and in the camera, uh, when you're shooting stills or if you're shooting video, let me show you where we are here with that. Okay, so when you're in video mode, and I'm gonna be using an X-T4 for this demo, and really it's the same for most Fujifilm X cameras, okay? So in the menu, under AFMF, if you go down to here, there's AFC custom setting, okay? Now, the first thing that you need to know about this is that unlike with stills, in video mode, you cannot save any of the preset values, you know, the custom settings. You can't create any of your own recipes. Fuji, if you're listening, it would be really nice in a firmware update to be able to do that. Say, have three different uh, custom presets that you can create and then just quickly switch from one to another. That would be a really nice feature. I think you can do it in a firmware update. But anyway, I wanted to throw that out there. So. Basically, the way that this works is you have tracking sensitivity and AF speed, and it can be quite confusing. For this demo, I'm going to use a 56 millimeter f1.2 lens. I do not recommend using this lens ever. Um, this lens is horrible, horrible for video use. OK, so just letting you know that. And. Um, let me go into here. Good. All right. So let's go back to the camera. Take a look. Now tracking sensitivity, and I don't know if you can see that okay, but on uh, tracking sensitivity, think of tracking sensitivity as glue, okay? Glue that keeps your camera stuck to your subject, all right? And when you adjust the tracking sensitivity in the video mode, you are either having really strong glue or really weak glue. You're adjusting the strength of that stickiness of the camera being stuck from one subject. And then when you have another subject pop into frame, the camera will then jump from one subject it was focused on to another. And you can control how sticky that camera is that's what that first menu option is, okay? It's called tracking sensitivity. Now, here's the thing about tracking sensitivity, and this really confuses a lot of people, all right? It's completely opposite common sense, <laughs> okay? Because you would think tracking sensitivity, it goes from zero to four. Do you see that right there? Zero to four, okay? 
you would think that logically, the higher the number, the more sensitive the camera would be and it would jump quickly, right? You would think that. Well, it's the opposite, in fact. And so if you have it set to zero, right, then the camera is going to be as fast as possible. So if you have it set to zero, tracking sensitivity, the camera is going to jump from one subject to another really quickly. And as you move this up, say all the way to four, okay, the camera's gonna be stuck more to the main subject and it's gonna take a lot more for the camera to jump from one subject to another. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind is tracking sensitivity. It's kind of the opposite of common sense. The lower the number, the more that the camera will sort of jump from the main subject to the next subject, if that makes sense. Okay, so let me demo this. I think that's the best thing to do right now. Let me show you this. Okay, so again, I've got the... Um, I've got the 56 millimeter lens on here. You do not ever really want to use this lens for video. It is a slow and noisy lens, but for the purpose of the video today, for this demo, I'm using it because it's so extreme in how it kind of focuses, and that's I want to demo it. So here we go. All right, so I have right now, I've got AFC custom setting, tracking sensitivity. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it in zero. All right, I'm going to leave autofocus speed on zero. And I'll explain what autofocus is in just a minute. And tracking sensitivity, I'm going to have it on zero. And watch, let me let me try something out here. And and by the way, all I'm doing because I don't have multiple cameras, it's not like I'm editing where I could put this together and you can see two things at once. I'm just going to move the camera from the main subject to another subject, just like that. I'm going to try and be consistent about it as I change these values. All right. Okay. And by the way, hi, everyone. I know there's people coming in from Taiwan. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Ray. Hi, Paul. Hi, Klaus. Hi, Will. Hi, David. Hi. I hope I got everybody. I wish I could. I, I want to talk with you and I will in a minute, but I do see your chats and uh, and I'm, I'm so glad you're here today with me. Okay, let's do this. So we have it on zero and there it is right there. I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm going to move the mic so you can hear me better. Okay. So now if I move this, I'm recording and I move it over here. Look at that. See? It's pretty fast to do that. And just to show you what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up the AF speed. I'm going to make it a little bit faster just to kind of really show you this. You know, okay, here we go. Watch. You see that? it immediately recognized that there was a different subject and it immediately focused in on it. Okay, look at that. It jumped to there. It jumped. It's, there, it's not very sticky at all. It jumped. Okay, now watch. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it on tracking sensitivity and I'm going to crank this all the way up to four. All right. Now watch what happens. Same situation. Do, 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 do. Look at that. You see how long that took? Like, you, did you see that? Did you see that? How long that took? The camera, it's like, it's like, it, it, wait, huh? It's confused. It's slower. It's, it just doesn't do it as quickly. Let me try it again. All right. All right. So here it is, right? We go here. Now that's really slow and almost unusable. So really when it comes to shooting video, I would recommend you start out by putting your tracking sensitivity to two. I wouldn't do it much higher than two, okay? Um, that's <laughs> because you can have um, a real problem if you're shooting more than one thing. Now, let's say you're shooting, you're outside and you're shooting a person walking through the trees kind of with, with a lot of foliage and you know nature and all that and it's one person and you're focusing on their face in the center of the frame that would be a case where you would want to put the tracking sensitivity up to I think plus five or the highest value because you don't want those branches that come maybe in the foreground 
to pull the focus away from your main subject, which would be the person walking through the woods, right? So there are cases you'd want to use it, but in a vast majority of them, I think it's too slow. Now, keep in mind that it also depends on the lens you're using. That's actually as significant as the setting that you make in the camera, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna put a different lens on here. I'm gonna take the 56 off, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put on the 23 millimeter at F2, okay? 23 millimeter lens at F2. This is a much faster lens than this one. You'll see what I mean in a second, all right? So let me get the camera ready here. I'm gonna put it back into here. Tracking sensitivity, let's switch back to the camera. Okay, so I'm gonna go tracking sensitivity to zero, autofocus speed to plus five. That's on steroids, that combination right there. If you do tracking sensitivity to zero, autofocus speed to plus five, okay? That's like a really hyped up, caffeinated, <laughs> caffeinated, you know, amped up on caffeine camera, if you have it that way. Watch this, okay, here we go. All right, let's get a shot of, all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move the camera, here we go. Look at that. Shit, did you see how fast that is? Look at that. That moves so fast, it's unbelievable, and it's silent too. That's why you would use a lens like this over the 56 for video shooting, okay? Um, does that make sense to everybody? Let me just make sure that I, people are still hearing my audio. This is so weird doing it live. Hello, Oscar from Colombia. Okay, so let me put it back to the other setting real quick here. And we'll go tracking sensitivity to, to four, all right? Now, keep in mind that at a tracking sensitivity change to that at four, even with a really fast lens, it is going to make it slower now. So watch, watch the difference, okay? Okay, here we go. I'm going to move it. It's like there's a delay. It's it's kind of like this live stream, you know? <laughs> Most of the time when I do live streams, there's just this sort of delay. <laughs> audio delay or it's my brain going oh crap which which camera which mic i mean i'm thinking about 900 things right now which i normally don't do when i shoot videos so you're seeing a slower version of pal the tech right okay so let's go to the next setting um the next one is autofocus speed okay and that is a minus five all the way through a plus five okay now when you have it from I would recommend just keeping it on zero most of the time, but let's see a comparison with the fast lens like this. And what we'll do is we'll put the tracking sensitivity in the me medium range and we'll adjust our AF speed and I'll show you the difference and maybe that'll make it a little more clear. Okay, so let me do that now. All right, so I'm gonna have this on minus five. Let's go back, tracking sensitivity. I'm gonna just put this at, actually at two. I'm gonna put it right in the middle. But five, autofocus speed of minus five. Okay, let's try it now. Okay, and quite honestly, why would you want the focus to be slowed down, right? Why, what would be the reason that you would want that? Well, cinematic. I mean, look at the new iPhone 13, you know, cinematic mode, right? Where it, you're pulling, your, you've got rack focus, where you've got your subject here, you have another subject there, and the camera's going out of focus here and focusing in here in a slow manner. That's what this setting is for on the Fujifilm camera, okay? And that's why it's there. So for more, I hate to say the word, it's so overused. For more cinematic video, I would recommend keeping the 
AF speed on the lower end. Let's see what it looks like now on the higher end at five, okay? I just realized, I don't think you saw, I, okay, another little goof here. I got to show you what I see through the camera, okay? <laughs> Let me try it again. Hey, Vishal, how you doing, pal? All right, let's try it again. <laughs> oh, I love the live. I love the live. There we go. Okay, now look at how it takes a little bit of time to acquire the subject, but once it does, it immediately focuses really fast. So again, the first setting, tracking sensitivity, is how fast your camera can kind of go, okay, that's the subject I want to focus on. And then AF speed is obviously, once the camera's found the subject, how fast to pull that focus, to turn that focus ring, okay? And the two work together. So if you're out and about, you could put your camera in like a 19, late 1980s, early 1990s camcorder kind of, you know, go into here, go into tracking sensitivity. And what I would do is I would put it all the way down to zero to jump from one subject as quickly as possible. I put my auto focus speed as fast as possible. And if you do that, if you put it in those settings, your camera is gonna kind of be like, like if you take a, a dog out into the woods and there's a lot of like, <laughs> you know, deer and other, like that. So it's gonna constantly be looking around. And also once it finds the target, it's gonna zoom in immediately and, and very quickly. Versus, you know, on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you put it into tracking sensitivity on a four, even though it makes no sense, it's a higher number, but tracking sensitive, sensitivity on a plus four, it'll be less sticky, autofocus speed, dumb that down to minus five, okay, now you have that, right? Now, if you put it in those settings, your camera is, you know, it's going to be just slow and moving slow and cinematic. So, I think kind of in the middle between those two, but what I have found that works for me on most of the videos that I shoot, general purpose stuff, um, usually with one or two subjects, what I will put them in, I usually have it set to this. Tracking sensitivity, I will generally keep it at two. And then autofocus speed, I will generally keep it around here. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, whoa, 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 whoa. what am I saying? Scratch that, I'll keep it around here, right just after the zero. I don't want it too fast, but I, I'd rather, if I had to decide, it look a slightly less cinematic, but make sure it's focusing faster than going for that cinematic. And, and frankly, if you really wanna go for cinematic, you don't use autofocus anyway. You put the camera in manual and you, you do your focus yourself. And that way you have complete control over that. Okay, does that make sense? All right. Somebody's getting an X-T3 tonight. All right. Hey, wait, I can try this out. Let me see if this works. <laughs> I don't know, did y'all hear the, did you hear the applause? <laughs> oh, I love playing with all this stuff. Okay, <laughs> turn that off. Somebody's getting an X-T3. I had to try something. Um, very cool. Very cool, Gary. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, who else do we have here? Got uh, Mike is on. Gary in the house. Vishal, of course, Vishal. It wouldn't be a live stream without you, Vishal. Uh, and uh, how is everybody doing? Um, where are we at? Okay, I got about seven minutes or so. Um, any questions? Does the focus speed not also depends on the lens you're using? Yes, yes, yes. That is actually equally important to these settings in the camera. So again... If you have a 56 millimeter lens, all right, if you've got, say, this one right here, the camera is gonna focus incredibly slowly in, in this video mode. And if you're using a lens like, you know, the 23 millimeter F2, much faster. Now, the fastest one of all, 
if I can find it. Where's my 90 millimeter? <laughs> Where was my 90 millimeter lens? Maybe here? No? I just, I don't know where my 90 millimeter is. I, oh, yeah, I'll show you where my 90 millimeter is. <laughs> it's right here. Okay. Okay, so the 90 millimeter is really fast. This lens has a quad linear motor, okay? Quad, four of these things, four linears, okay? And it's fast. It is like, I used to take this thing in back when my kids were going through karate and I was indoors in dark light. I mean, there was not much light in the studio and I would put this thing at F2 and I didn't need that high of an ISO. I think the highest I ever went up, I mean, maybe was 3000. And I, this thing nailed it and fast board breaking karate, people jumping in the air. This thing if you want a fast autofocus lens, the 90 millimeter, you you couldn't get better than that, in my opinion. Now, I haven't tried every single Fuji lens, but that's my experience so far. Yeah. Uh, I've not tried the 50 millimeter F1. I would love to try that. Um, Fuji, if you have one laying around, I'd love to test it out. So, um, am I going to discuss these settings when shooting stills? No, Paul, I'm not. And first of all, I have a whole video on that very topic. It's called um, Focus Modes of the X-T3, and just search for it on my channel, and that covers everything about that. Um, and, and there's a lot to cover, and I don't have the time to go into a full-blown thing. However, if, if there's a lot of requests for that topic, I will do a, kind of an updated video on it. I could even do another live workshop on it, and I'd be happy to do it, but I'm not going to do it today on that. Um, hi from Thailand. Hello, hello. Hi. This is so cool. Will, really appreciate the kind words. John, how you doing? Bon? Bahrain. I got someone here from Bahrain. Very cool. Um, are you using a follow focus when shooting video in manual? Yes. Yes, I am. Hold on one second. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, this is my hat rack, otherwise known as a uh, a gimbal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, this is much better now. This is how I, I follow focus. So, <laughs> right? What I use follow focus a lot with manual lenses when I have them mounted on a gimbal, believe it or not. That, that's most of the time when I when I use that. Um, this is wonderful, by the way. The DJI Ronin SC for Fujifilm has this focus knob, and it communicates with the camera, and it's, it's so wonderful because you can keep your hand on the gimbal. You don't have to focus. Um, I don't know if you can see this thing or not. Let me. You, you don't have to um, be, you know, because you can throw the gimbal off balance if you're monkeying with it up here. But what's so wonderful is you can do this, right? So while you're shooting, you just got this wonderful, wonderful focus ring. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Raymond Reddington, definitely. Hi, John. The hand, John the Handyman. Awesome. Um, I need a handyman. I knew. I need someone to help me out. I am buried. I am so behind. And by the way, I'm sorry if I've not answered your emails and your messages. I was looking through them today. I'm about ready to declare email bankruptcy. I just published a video on this standing desk. And, um, you know, I... <laughs> I lost an entire day making that video. And what I mean by that is I shot all this footage about six and a half hours of time shooting all this footage of this standing desk, B-roll shots, right? I had both the X-T3 and the X-T4. I had them on gimbals. I was doing these like all kinds of stuff and I wasn't paying attention. And on the X-T3, I left the X-T3. I feel embarrassed. I don't even know if I should say this. All right. I left the X-T3 in um, manual focus mode. So this was on the M, right? M for moron. All right. I left it in M. Footage was blurry. And I was trying to shoot the footage kind of like I see other YouTubers shooting desks, you know, where it's this minimalist thing and you've got this plant and it's really just perfectly balanced and aligned and you've got the music and it's really awesome. 
And I just realized I was so frustrated with it. it the, the shoot was going terrible and it wasn't me. It wasn't me. And I was thinking about, you know, God, this is just raising my blood pressure. I'm getting so frustrated by all of this. And I realized that, you know, at the end of the day, I need to to be me. I need to do it in the style that I would do it. And I, then I thought, oh, blood pressure. Okay, I'll put on a blood pressure thing on the air. That'll be fun. You know, maybe we'll do a thing, a bit with the, I'm laying on the desk and the whole desk, I don't know, the whole desk goes up. I didn't even mention how tall the desk got or how low it goes. I, I didn't go into a lot of the specs. It was pretty much a, a manual on how not to do a product video, but it was how I would do a video. It was me. And so the reason I'm telling you all this, and by the way, the company that makes the desk wrote back and they love the video. So it actually worked out, but you always want to be yourself, whatever you're doing. Okay. I don't know how I got on that topic, but that's so important. Yeah. Um, okay. So auto cue, I'm considering one of my channel is videos. Okay. Fast focusing lens is the 18 to 35. I don't have the 18 to 35, I must say. And I wish that I did because I keep hearing good things about it. Um, it, it, it's hard because, you know, my wife will see all these lenses and at some point there's this, you know, how much, how many lenses do you need? kind of thing, you know, <laughs> what I'm thinking of doing. And let me just ask you this opinion before I go, because this is really important. W would this be bad if, because I can't get all this equipment, Fuji doesn't send me very much. I mean, they sent me two things in the entire time I've had this channel to test and I had to return them. So I, it's not like I'm getting new stuff all the time from Fuji. W would it be okay if I rented a lens, okay, like the 510, rented it, and then tested it out and reported what I found or tested, say, the X-H1, which is a camera that I don't own that I would love to do an X-H1 versus an X-T4 video, right? Or the GFX 50S. You can rent these things, rent them for a week or two. Yeah, it's a little bit of money to outlay, but it's a lot cheaper than buying one, which right now I, I really can't do. So is that, is that cheating? You know, should YouTubers rent equipment and say, well, I've been testing this camera and I'll tell you what I think. Well, you haven't been testing it. You rented it for a couple of weeks. So I'm afraid of that. That is, you know, I, I don't want to come off as, you know, turning it on, playing with a few buttons and then telling you whether or not you should get the camera. When I did the X-T4 review, when I reviewed the X-T4, if you haven't seen that, go watch it. <laughs> a little plug for my own video. When I did the X-T4, that video, I had the camera for six months before I did the video on purpose. I didn't want to do a video until I had had the camera for at least six months. So, um, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Oh, I'm glad I, I, I didn't get much. Um, I, I was a little stressed about that desk review. First of all, cause it's not really my audience, but second of all, yeah, I mean, I, I was like, this is kind of stupid, this, this video, but thank you so much. Do I ever get used? And I appreciate the support on the channel. Do, do I ever get used lenses? Um, twice I have, and both times it worked out great. So it wasn't Fuji. It was another um, brand a while back. Sony. Excuse me. All right. Um, <laughs> so it's not cheating. Okay, good. Would absolutely be fine to rent things. Okay. Wait a minute. What does he say? You just have to say that you did as a caveat. Good point. That's a really good point, and I will do that. So... If I review a piece of gear, the X100 or whatever it is, and I rented it, I promise you that I will say it up front. It'll be right after, hi everyone, welcome to Palatech. It'll be right there in the video. I'll say it before I do anything else. Okay, awesome. All right, listen, I I absolutely love this, but I, I'm gonna, gonna wrap this live workshop up. I please let me know if you want more of these little live workshops, because what I could do is pick a subject. You know, it, it can't be this complicated, you know, how to use flash. That's a long and involved subject, but a little piece of the camera and I could demo it and do it live. And, and, and I would love to do it. It's fun because I can get a little bit of feedback and respond to it. Right. Robert, thank you so much. Thank you, man. Thank you. Awesome. Um, adapters, Sigma. Well, I've got an adapter and I'll show you. I think I've got. See, I'm never going to get out of here. No, this I have to go after. 
Let me just show you this. So I have this adapter. This is a Canon Sigma mount 18 to 55 art lens. I love this thing. Love, 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 love. Love this lens. All right, have a look at this. Check it out. Okay, so if I try just to put it on the camera, right? If I try and just, won't fit, won't fit, okay? So you need to get an adapter. And I have somewhere, here it is right here. It's made by Viltrox. It's called the Mount Adapter EFFX1. Let me show you, EF, this one right here. You see how fast that focus was, <laughs> there we go. Okay, so that's the adapter for this this lens. And thank you, Jose. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm really glad it's been helpful. That, that means a lot to me. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in. Okay, let me show you again. It just goes right and I'm mounted in like this. Okay, and then right onto the camera. And this is this is a stunning lens. I love this lens. I put this on my Canon 80D, and I used that for some of the B-roll for the uh, the desk video, uh, just the goofy stuff. I, I didn't all the other shots of me with the desk and all that. That was all done on an XT3 and an XT4 during the reshoot. Um, but let me show you this lens real quick. It's it's an 18 to 35. I'll show you the autofocus because it does have autofocus with this Viltrox adapter that um, I'm talking about. And Jose, yes, that beer is going to be awesome. I'll have it tonight. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay, let's try this real quick. So um, where is it? Wrong button. There we go. Okay, I've got it. In, I now have it in AFC. You see how slow that is? Look at that. Slow. Slow. And you want to be careful not to blame the lens. So let's try our settings. Let's try our settings. Okay, so we go into settings. Come on. There we go. Settings, AFC, tracking sensitivity. We're going to go down tracking sensitivity. We're going to make that a zero. We're going to make autofocus speed a five. And again, the reason I'm showing you this is because when you change out a lens, there's no one size fits all AFC custom setting. It depends on the lens. If you get one thing from this video, get that. It depends on the lens. So with this art lens, this Sigma art lens, 18 to 35, you just saw the settings. Let's take a look at what it does. So it's faster, but it's still a lot slower than a Fuji native lens. Um, I would still rather have this Sigma than this for video. This one is just too noisy, the 56. Okay, so um, I have quite a mess here to clean up, and I am going to head off. Um, Oh, you guys, thank you. You don't know, thank you. I am so appreciate the super chat, but it is not necessary. Just seeing all these familiar faces is so awesome. I love it. Love to India. Jose, how you doing? How you doing? Oh, this is so great. I want to talk to you all. My kids are going to be so mad at me if I don't, if I'm not there to, to get them. So I'm going to have to end the stream. But what I will do is I will make this stream available on the channel today i think it auto publishes but when i'm done with what i gotta go do i will make sure of it and if you missed anything if you just joined us now i will go ahead and i will um publish it and i'll keep the chat going so you can see the chat and the questions that were asked and what i'll even do is i'll go back myself through the chat and if i missed any questions i will try and find you if i know who you are i'll shoot you an email i've got a lot of your email addresses and, and i'll try and answer them the best i can just know that I'm ready to declare email bankruptcy <laughs> soon, so I'm a little slow on the comments. Benjamin, and I, Benjamin, how you doing, pal? There's someone on the chat that I just interviewed for a podcast. I, Benjamin Canerick is in the house, and he was the only guest to come back a second time. He braved to come back a second time. We had a wonderful conversation. I have to edit that video. That's another video that's going to be coming out. Wait until you see what Benjamin has been up to over in La Défense, Paris. 
Oh my God, you are. And he talks about how he did it. So it's really wonderful. All right, everyone. I wish I could stay, but I have to go. Got to go see my kids, but I will see you in it. Let me try this. Hold on. Well, I hope the uh, live workshop was helpful or at least entertaining. And if you liked it, well, give it the like and subscribe. Did it work? <laughs> I don't know. Did it work now? Hold on. It's not working. Where's my like and subscribe? Give it the like and subscribe. There, it worked. Maybe that's the second time it did it. Okay. Um, I will see you all in another video very, very, very soon. So long.